Here's the situation. You've got just over a hundred grand in a naughty offshore account. But you want to go very fast and look incredibly glamorous. What do you buy? The obvious choice is the all-new Mercedes SL63 AMG. It's a motoring icon, but it's got some stiff competition. The glamorous Maserati Gran Cabrio. This Italian beauty is powered by a Ferrari engine. And the hardcore Audi R8. It's just been updated with a brand new double clutch gearbox. Our three tests are designed to reflect a typical cross continental cruise. We're starting at the toll booth. Why, of course, it's the blast away from the payage test. <laughs> This is a BMW M3. It costs half as much as our Super Cabrios, but has almost identical performance. We'll see if any of our drop tops can beat it off the line. And look, a wannabe racer is driving it. Typical. Jason's going to try and beat me in each of the three convertibles. We're going to cruise up to the start line as if we were just putting our wallets away, having paid the toll booth, and then nail it. First to the finish line wins. And his first choice is the Mercedes. Ooh, smile. The SL63 is the most powerful and talkiest car here. And this model has a £12,000 performance pack, which boosts its grunt even higher. I've noticed after paying my money with payage, I noticed that there's a, a slightly a aged man that's given me the eye. He's coming out the payage. I'm just coming out the payage. It's all right, don't panic, pal. I think he wants to race you, man. So we're going to wait until this line, then we're going to give it some bifter. Maybe I can just get a little jump on him. I'll let him go first, then. Oh, yes! <laughs> oh! I had him at the beginning. But now, power, 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 power. The Merc's relentless torque beats the M3 over our 200 meter sprint. Next, I'll face the Audi. It's 38 brake horsepower and 273 pound foot down on the SL, but does have a weight advantage. Now, this is the lightest of all the uh, super cabrios here. Four-wheel drive should help in the old drag strip competition. It's the quickest from 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds, and it's got a glorious V10 engine. I think I might give it a rev, just a rev up tip. <laughs> Fancy another race, old boy? Hit it! <laughs> Oh, no, that's just gone. Put that out. Just gone, gone, gone. I tell you what, it's so smooth. Silky gear changes on this. Oh, I love this car. The R8's brand new double clutch gearbox is faultless, but it's the sound of the V10 engine that defines the car. The Audi beats the M3 by an even bigger margin than the Merc. Next, the Maserati. And I might be in a spot of bother. It's the heaviest of the, of the bunch, and it's got the least horsepower. I could be on for a win this time. I paid at the toll booth. Oh, it's that old Logan Kevin wants a race. Here we go. <laughs> Got a good gear change, he's hanging in there, he's hanging in there. I'll tell you what, it's close. But he's not gonna beat me, he's not gonna beat me, he's trying to get back in the run. There's not a lot in it. It may be the cheapest of our super cabrios, but we can't forgive this brilliant looking Maserati for being slower than a saloon car that's half the price. So the Audi takes the glory in round one. Coming up, we hit the auto route. 
Only two cars can go through to the final, so our next test is crucial. We've now left the toll booths behind and we're powering down the Autoroot. The biggest problem with any convertible is the noise and turbulence caused by blustery air as it enters the car's cabin. Which brings us on to test two. Next to me, my glamorous passenger. Say hello, Jason. Bonsoir. Doesn't want to be exposed to any sudden gusts of wind. No, I do not. To find out which car is best at protecting its occupants from the elements, I've got a device. A device to measure wind. And the car with the lowest reading on my device will be the winner. The device measures wind speed in metres per second. A higher reading means a more turbulent cabin and therefore a less refined drive. First, the loser of round one, the Maserati Grand Cabrio. Device is active. There we have it, 100 miles an hour. 3.16 on the device. 3.2 on the device. 3.4. The peak reading is the one we'll use as our result. 3.4 is the highest reading. With refinement measured, we need to check the second most important aspect of a super cabrio. High-speed stability. Yeah, the steering feels were loading the G up and the walls coming up. A Maserati is the heaviest car here and feels slightly unwieldy. Enough! I hate the Opal. Look at my hand! Look at my hand! So, the... look! <laughs> look at my hand! The refinement reading for the Maserati was. Oh, I've forgotten now. <laughs> I told on. 3.4. 3.4 metres per second. Look what it's done to my hair! It's made mine go grey. <laughs> so the Maserati doesn't offer as much precision as we'd like during high-speed driving, but it has set a refinement benchmark for the others to beat. Next, the Mercedes SL63 AMG. Well, we're up to 100 miles an hour. 1.5. 1.5? That's massively different. Consider it about, I tell you what, though, just generally in here, it feels less buffety, don't you think? But to be fair, the Maserati is a four-seater, so you've got a bigger hole in the middle of the car. Very true. 2.1. You're 100? Yeah. 2.1 it is. Which is a lot less than 3.4. It's definitely more refined than the Maserati, although we do think that's partly because of the smaller two-seat cabin. I can feel my hair's not getting blown so much. Well, I'm less grey. But let's see how comfortable Jason feels when I turn up the wick. We better be doing 100, no more. I'm just testing it. Yeah, but I don't like now. it. Heavier steering, but much more sure looking less body roll. I tell, you, I tell you what's interesting is my demeanour, I'm a bit more composed in this car. Yeah, I'm not putting this on. I generally don't like being on ovals with... Mr. Lunatic here. Stop it! <laughs> it feels more substantial and stable than the Maserati and is a tough act for the Audi to follow. speeding car cleaves a massive hole in the air. The wind deflector helps prevent the displaced air from rushing back in. The Audi's deflector is smaller than the Merck's. 5.2. There's a lot going on, isn't there, the back here? Too much. It's by far the least refined of the trio. Time to check out its high-speed handling. I can't believe I'm doing 100 miles an hour compared to the other two. It's so short-footed through the corners. Tick. Well, oh, just, I'm braking, I'm braking! Just, I'm on the brakes! Just, I'm, I'm back on the power, I'm back on the power! Enough, enough, enough! The 
have a look out for it. Look up through that. Look, nothing's going to happen. Look, nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. Oh, oh. <laughs> the Audi R8 is the most stable around the bowl, but thanks to its tiny wind deflector, it has a very turbulent cabin and is the least refined at high speed. This car will wreck even the priciest hairdo. Now, only two cars can go through to our final round, and the winners so far have been the Audi and the Mercedes, which means we've got to say goodbye to the Maserati, which is a shame because it's dropped dead gorgeous and we look right at home in Monte Carlo. But in this company, it's just not fast enough. Now, these aren't hardcore supercars for racing drivers. No, no, these are for people who like to pose. So we're going to drive them just like they would, with one arm on the steering wheel and the other on top of the door. It's only fair. Gucci or Prada. Tails. <laughs> I think I'll take the Audi. So the idea is then we, we're coming off the old highway to yeah. cruise through the old Alps or mountain roads. The wind obviously goes down. We're going to keep all the toys on, all the tractions on. And the question is, which car's, you know, easiest and fastest so you just drive with one end? While driving in this one-handed poser's style, we'll see which is fastest against the clock. First, a lap to get used to our new driving style, then one on the stopwatch. Audi's four-wheel drive system should help by offering good traction and stability. And I'll tell you what, after just a couple of corners, this feels pretty sure-footed. Doesn't it just? The R8's four-wheel drive system sends 85% of the power to the rear wheels. But that hasn't led to tail-happy handling, thanks in part to a nicely judged stability control system. But you really don't feel the stability coming in, do you? It's amazing. It's subtle, isn't it? I feel like your slacks, actually, for cruising. My slacks? Yeah, your slacks. They're quite nice. Put them under the steel there. Ready, steady. Boom, on that goes. Oh. Ooh, I say, madam. Ooh. Oh, Do you like this one, Andy? Does it make you feel comfortable? I don't like it. So just go steady round this I don't corner. like this corner at all. I never know where the apex is. Oh, I missed it as well. A lot of unders in the curb. I tell you what, you could cruise up the out. Go round, right, I could do my hair in the mirror going round this corner, but... <laughs> and the old gear changes are so smooth. And it kicked down mid-corner, though. Oh, oh, well, I tell you what, there was a bit of movement on entry then, wasn't there? Are you ready with that watch, then? Stop the clock. Now. 21.9. That's not bad for a blast up the Alps with one hand only. One problem with this cool way of driving, right? Yeah. My bloody hands freezing <laughs> cold! <laughs> oh, dear. The R8 suffers from understeer at the limit, but overall is incredibly smooth, stable and refined. It's a very tough act for the Merc to follow. The SL has a better power-to-weight ratio and masses of extra torque. It's also rear-wheel drive, which I'm hoping will give it even better handling than the Audi. I tell you, this feels quick. Oh, it's an apex. Do you want to go and see that apex? No, I don't like it. But there's an immediate and rather serious issue. While the R8 stability control was very subtle, the Mercs, well, it's a meddling little mistress. Oh, hello. Oh, he won't let me do anything. Power! Ah. Oh. When it senses the rear wheels are being overwhelmed by power and torque, it forces the engine to shut up shop, which is ruining the rhythm of my driving. I'm flat now, nothing's happening. Oh, a lot of interruption, eh? A lot of interruption. Oh, massive interruption. Get straight for a time lap. Yeah, come on, let's have a go. I see what you mean about your hands are being cold. With the car not giving me full power when I want it, I need to make up some time by braking even later oh, than usual. Violent on those brakes. Do you really have to brake that hard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But this car isn't fitted with Merck's 10 grand carbon ceramic brake package, and I keep overestimating its ability to slow down. You don't really know. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Tried to break a bit late then. We'll give him a second chance. My second bite of the cherry ends just as badly. Oh no, he's oh, done it again. again. He's done it again. again. Oh, the seatbelt's ah! got me. Go, go, go. This has had me. <laughs> oh, the seatbelt's got me now. What's happened? If it senses a crash, the SL seatbelts tighten and the windows go up. Obviously, it doesn't like my driving. Mine won't release. <laughs> The seatbelt's got me, oh, I can't breathe. We've got a third lap now. <laughs> What's happened? Oh. He thought I was having an accident oh. then. Oh, I thought you were having an accident <laughs> as well. <laughs> Time for lap three. Right. All right. Here we go. Well, accelerate. Oh. Accelerate. There's a corner here, Jason. It's a sharp one. i tell you what, it didn't have to creep up on you, that. Power! Don't do anything. Whoa, top in. The steering's really light. I'm flat on the throttle now. Flat to the floor. Oh, you got in too fast. I drove Come smooth. On. You drove in too fast. Close, but no cigar. What was it? What was it? One minute twenty-two point six, beaten by a one minute twenty-one point nine. <laughs> So we have our winner. The best car for combining supercar speed with movie star glamour is the Audi R8 V10 Spider. It might play havoc with your hairdo, but it's easier to drive, quicker and better sounding than the Mercedes or the Maserati. The Audi, at the end of the day, fights back, comes out on top. Fair result? Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is incredibly quick considering the lap time. I'm surprised it's as fast as that because it's, I'm on the throttle. You didn't have a lot of practice. Anything. You had a lot of practice. That's uh, true, but the other thing is my hand is dead. <laughs> I've been out there for three laps.